Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, otherwise strange content. Today we're looking at the Rankin and Bass classic, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Now this is one of those classics that is incredibly uh, off-putting to look at at points, but it is a great feat of stop-motion art. We all know how I feel about stop-motion, but it is pretty impressive. And it's a classic, and if you remember last July, I covered Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July, which covers the whole extended Rankin and Bass universe. So I'm going to narrow in on this part of the big lore and just jump right in. Children everywhere are making preparations for an event of world-shaking significance. So clearly Santa Claus visiting is a very big deal. Top of every kid's priority. Well, hello there. Hi. Oh, I've got lots of letters for Santa today, but a lot of ask questions. Really? I've never heard of a kid asking, like, doing a Q&A for Santa. Like, that's weird. <laughs> it's valid, but it's unique, I think. Why do you have whiskers? Why do you live at the North Pole? So, so many kids are just like, what the fuck is up with Santa Claus? Like, they they didn't say that word, they're, they're children, but like, that's pretty much what they mean. So this guy's like, well, I'll tell you all about Santa Claus. I know everything about Santa. So you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. That's the song. <laughs> That's what they named the movie after. Yeah, this I think has my favorite music out of any Rankin Bass thing. Um, the music is just really solid, and uh, Fred Astaire does the voice of the narrator, and he's just adorable. When Santa was just a little baby. You mean Santa was once <laughs> a baby? And this is something I never really understood. The letters talk to him in the voices of the children who sent them, which I, it's creepy to me. I don't. I don't think it was supposed to be creepy, but it's just, just odd. <laughs> there was a small city called Summertown. Now the main reason for all this gloom was the mayor. So this lovely little Christmas story for children starts off with a dictator. Burgermeister Meisterburger. The Burgermeister Meisterburger. Herr Burgermeister, Herr Burgermeister, look what was discovered on your front stoop. A baby. So somebody dropped their baby off on the stoop of a ruthless dictator to an oppressive nation, which is a, an odd choice to begin with. Outrageous! What's its name? I like the implication that the name would change his decision on whether or not to keep the baby. You could name the baby something else, sir, if you don't like the name. Get the brat out of here! Mean. So the only name left um, for the baby is Claus. I guess that's, maybe that's his, his given first name? Or the family's last name? I don't know. But that's where Claus comes from, I guess. And then this guy has one job. It's just to take the baby to the orphanage, and he loses the baby on the way. The sleigh! It broke away! Oh, do come back! What the hell, dude? That mountain was the home of the awful. The terrible. Oh, I hate to even say his name. Well, you're gonna have to say his name. I wanna know what his name is. Winter Warlock. Oh. The animals knew they had to hide that baby, and fast. So the animals have more foresight than the human people entr entrusted with this baby, so they hide the baby and then take him far away. Kringle was their name. The door was answered by an elf named Dingle. So they take him to live with a group of elves, much like Snow White, except the baby doesn't know how to cook and clean yet, I guess. It's more than a nose! There's a whole baby attached to it! Also, here's a brand new development. Santa Claus is a ginger. Hell yeah. We shall call him Chris. Chris Kringle. Oh yeah, so this uh, family of elves, their surname is Kringle, and they name him Chris. Chris Kringle. His license says Claus. Unusual name. They're like, screw the baby's given name by his birth parents. We don't care about that. His name is Chris now. They set up a little school and taught him all the important things. But he grows up happy with the elves. And counts stars on a crystal night. They had to teach him how to count stars? Feels like something he would instinctively know how to do. They were toy makers. The only problem was there were no children to give them to. And they teach him how to build toys even though they don't have any kids to give the toys to, so they're just like really, really into building toys that just get thrown into a pile outside. It's a difficult responsibility. We get a song. I definitely don't mind it. Surely 
clearly they're like making toys for like the children in the palace, but I like the implication that the grown ass king still plays with toys. I vibe with that. So that's why he makes such wonderful toys. I feel like they're trying to gaslight me into giving Santa Claus credit for building toys this whole time. We all know he just makes the elves do that. But the seals taught him the most important thing. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. How to laugh. So he learns to laugh from some seals. Finally, Chris was a fine young man. I'm a man now, Tanta. And he's a man now, apparently. I can take those toys across the mountain of the whispering winds. And he's determined to not let these toys go to waste anymore, so they make him a suit like theirs, which is the red suit, and off he goes. Hey! Yeah! You're a penguin. Uh, oh, he's cute. I'll call you Topper. Who nears my mountain? And then Santa and his new friend Topper get called out by the the Winter Warlock. He's got to cross my mountain on the way home. I mean, private property is inherently theft. I don't think it's your mountain. Oh, and by the way, while this is happening, the same dictator that rejected Chris as a baby trips on a toy, falls down the stairs, and decides that he hates toys and decides to ban them. There'll be no more toy makers to the king. Yeah, so he just has a vendetta against toys now. Like, he outlaws toys. Anyone found with a toy in his possession will be placed under arrest. He is not playing around. And they're just like rounding up all the kids' toys and taking them away when Chris shows up. Wearing such outlandish clothes. Clothes? Clothes? I don't know what clothes are. Look, all I want to do is give away these toys. Toys? Toys? And then they all freak out because he has illegal contraband. We're doing our chores. Yeah, no more playing. Lame. Are you uh, washing out uh, stockings? Uh-huh. Then we hang them by the fireplace. Hanging stockings by the fire. I'm not sure where that's going to come into place. Better not pout. Why? I came to town. And look what I brought! Toys! Bribing kids for being good. <laughs> what Christmas is really about. You must not play with toys. So the school teacher, who is a very big stickler for the rules, shows up. Don't you know toys are against the law? Gee, that's kind of a silly law. I have to agree. For you? A china doll? I always wanted one when I was a little girl. I love how she's like, I hate toys. And then he's like, here's a toy. And she's like, thanks. An avocado. If you sit on my lap today, a kiss, a toy is the price you'll pay. And then this is the one song that I don't like. Uh, it's called A Kiss for a Toy, and it. If you sit on his lap today, a kiss, a toy is the price you'll pay. Did not age well. When you sit on my left knee, don't be stingy, be prepared to pay. You brats are under arrest! Wow, arresting kids. Very cool. Arrest this man immediately! Arrest him! Arrest him! So now Santa Claus is on the run from the law. We'll never find him in there. You could if you tried. You disturbed me for the very last time. And then he gets caught by the Winter Warlock and he's a very unpleasant fellow. Oh, well, I managed to save one little toy. If you wish to give me... A present? And then like everybody else, every other friend that Chris has made, he makes that friend by giving them a toy. My icy heart, it's melting. Oh. Changing from bad to goods as easy as taking your first step. Yeah. Put one foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking across the floor. This is one of those songs that pops into my head very randomly and very frequently. And soon you'll be walking out the door. I'm not sure why this particular song, but it is very catchy. Well, don't be the rule, be the exception. A good way to start is to stand. Rudolph? Put one foot in front of the other. The words are very complex, I know, but you'll get the hang of it. So Winter makes a snow globe or a crystal ball out of a big ball of snow. And then they just start spying on that girl, that teacher from before, that I guess Santa's into. Oh! And he just shows up in front of her in the woods. Letters and notes from the children of Sombertown. But I guess she's looking for him because the kids in town want 
him to make more toys. But only if they behave themselves. I got ways of knowing. And he's like, yeah, as long as they're good. And I'll know because I can spy on them all now. <laughs> I'll have to kind of slip them in after dark when the Burgermeister is asleep. So he's like, I'll have to break and enter in the middle of the night to bring them their toys because we're under like an oppressive regime. Uh, so that's what he's planning on doing. So you tell all the boys and girls to leave their doors unlocked tomorrow night. Can you imagine your kid being like, hey mom, I'm gonna leave the door unlocked tonight so that some like random guy just comes in and brings me toys. No, oh, I'm crowded. <laughs> but, but at least I'm loved. Oh, bless him. He tried all the doors. And if they were open, he knew a child lived inside who was expecting a toy. So he just went around trying doors. <laughs> What if somebody had left their door unlocked by accident? He would have just, like, literally committed a crime. All the town's doors and windows will be locked tight. So the Burgermeister forcibly locks up everybody's doors to try to stop this from happening. But Chris will not be deterred. Uh, you have an idea? Uh, uh, up the sky? Uh, 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 the moon? Uh, uh. Yes, the moon, Chris. That's a good way to get into the house. So for the first time ever, Santa goes down chimneys to get into houses. You see the origin story shaping up? They will be confiscated. <laughs> That's what you get. Nothing but drying stockings. <laughs> so yeah, they, they start hiding the toys in stockings because of the oppressive regime. Isn't this a weird origin story for Santa Claus? His next visit to Samba Town will be his last. <gasps> oh no! So a trap is being set for Chris, and they have to warn him, but they're afraid it's too late. Please, use your magic! I've been disenchanted. How? That's a very convenient or inconvenient thing for the plot. How did that happen? Nobody is going to do anything. And then they all get arrested. You are under arrest. Not me. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to talk your way out of that one, Chris. And then they burn all the toys. So you've got a German dictator policing creative expression by burning a whole bunch of- I've seen this before. Where have I seen this before? Oh, shit. You will never, never play again. Why did this have to be Santa's origin story? It could have been literally anything else. I promise they will never disturb you again. Ah, what good are your promises? He's like, yeah, you're a woman. We don't listen to you. we get the most 70s song in the whole movie. And I know just where I belong, with Chris. So Jessica wants to be Mrs. Claus, and she's like, yeah, now my life has purpose. <laughs> it's not like I was a teacher before and literally rearing an entire generation of children, <laughs> doing one of the most important jobs in existence. But anyway, good for her. If only you had your magic powers back. I have nothing but a few meager magical leftovers here in my pockets. So, the only magic that Winter can do now is to make reindeer fly. Magic feed corn? All I can do is make reindeer fly. Reindeer? So Jessica has a plan. They just had to take one nibble of that corn. And Comet and Cupid. And Donner and Blitzer. Did that kid just say Blitzer? That's not the name of a reindeer. And don't forget... <laughs> no, that, that, that's another story. Huh, it's a callback to the other movie. Pushing Up Roses has a wonderful video about this movie as well uh, that she did a couple years ago. I highly recommend it. I will link it below. She talks about this in her version, which is like, okay, they made the reindeer fly, but how did they get out of the jail cell? Let's go! That's still an important thing that we don't know how they did. I still have a little magic. Oh, oh, oh I'm not such a loser after all. Uh, <laughs> poor Winter, I'm worried about him. We'll have to push on. I'll go anywhere you say, Chris. So Santa's literally an outlaw, so to change his appearance to evade capture, he grows his famous beard. But you should not use your Kringle name. It's dangerous. What other name would suit me? There is one. You could have told him that was his real name before. Claws. And it was that name he asked Jessica to share. That's the name? Not the name of his adoptive family who raised him? I mean, I guess they are on the run, but like, still. It was a lovely wedding. Yes, sir. They held it on Christmas Eve. So they get married on Christmas Eve. This is the story of why we put presents under trees. And, and it's really funny because they tried to make it a religious thing with quotes like this. 
when first the wise men three. Which is fine and well, but it's funny because they're suggesting that the reason Christmas Day is important is because it celebrates Santa Claus getting married, which makes it kind of hard to also make it religious. I mean, we all know Jesus wasn't born on the 25th, but like, you know what I'm saying? Let me have just a little magic. Uh... So Winter's magic comes back a little bit just in time to light the trees. The, his magic abilities really come and go in convenient ways. And then they run away to the North Pole, not in outer space above the North Pole, if you saw the last video, the actual North Pole. And then they build a home and a toy making shop, which canonically in universe is the same shop where like Hermie worked in Rudolph, you know, where the beginning of Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July happened, so it all ties together. He still had to travel by night because he was considered an outlaw. And he keeps delivering toys as a rebel to the law, so good for him. You see, the Meisterburgers, they kind of died off and fell out of power. And this is also very weird. Uh, the uh, stop-motion Hitler character does not get defeated. He just kind of falls out of power, which is kind of anticlimactic, but, you know, whatever. At least he's gone. And then once he was gone, everybody loves Santa openly. He's very good, isn't he? Is that why he's called Santa Claus? That's why, honey. Oh, so he's called Santa because it means saint. Okay, cool. I'm afraid I'm going to have to limit my journeys to a one a year. They chose, of course, the holiest night of the year, the night of profound love. We all know he chose it because it was his anniversary and he didn't want to make plans for his anniversary. I've got my magic power working just fine. Oh, he's got his powers back. That's nice. Again. Everybody must love him. Well, most everybody. And then I love this little diss track to people who hate Christmas. Eh, bah, humbug. Christmas is a bother. The noise, the crowds, I really wish it were outlawed. Don't hate on people for loving the holidays, guys. The holidays are great, whichever one you celebrate. What would happen if we all tried to be like Santa and learn to give of ourselves, our talents, our love, and our hearts? Oh, that is a good message. The lesson at the end of the day is be Santa and do crimes, I guess. It comes snow or high water. Santa Claus is coming to town. And then it ends with a rendition of Santa Claus is coming to town, which is still one of the most threatening Christmas songs, in my opinion. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. And that's the end. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Oh my god, Topper, don't scare me like that. I thought you were dead for a second. What an interesting Christmas special it was. We're overdue for some Rankin and Bass, and it's Christmas, and you can't have Christmas without Rankin and Bass, so here we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. If you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye!